So you would kind of think that they would be the last friend to offer help to the U.S., but reports say Iran is offering to send aid to storm victims in New York. Of course they are. This is just on the heels of Iran announcing that it's investing $40 billion in their domestic oil sector in the next five months. Is it all just part of an elaborate PR blitz? With me now is Mike Barrett, principal at Diligent Innovations and a, a consulting firm that specializes in national security. Welcome back, Mike. Um, Afternoon. What do you make of this? Do you think they're ready to race over here and give us some help? Well, I mean, of course, if we said yes, they would put some people on a plane. But, you know, we're not talking about a huge amount of resources here. And as you indicated in the intro, I mean, this really is something we see pretty often in terms of diplomatic. We did it during the Cold War with Russia, same kind of thing. We've offered plenty of aid to Iran following some severe earthquakes. One of the most interesting periods in history actually was 2002, just after 9-11, when Iran actually had a horrible earthquake and they did accept some American assistance. But, of course, uh, tensions have worsened quite a bit since then. Do you think they offered to put people on a plane because they knew the airports were closed? <laughs> well, I mean, I think they knew that we weren't going to say yes. Uh, but also, had they said yes, they would have quickly grabbed some of their intelligence community and, and stuck some intelligence officers amongst the crowd that was coming over here anyway. So, of course, oh, we would yeah. say no to it. I was going to say, I mean, wouldn't there be some upside to us saying, yeah, come on, great, come on over, bring some money, come on over and help us out, bring whatever you have. I mean, is there any upside to the U.S.? Do we look good? Do we get anything out of it? I don't think so. I think there's a much bigger upside for Iran. I mean, they really are playing a global PR game right now regarding their acquisition of or their pursuit of nuclear weapons. And so the U.S. and Europe are trying very hard to keep these uh, severe sanctions in place and to put, you know, to really put a, a hurt on the Iranian economy. And so for us, it would be a, a PR loss. For them, it would be a PR win. But again, they get most of the win just by saying, hey, we were willing to do this. And just, you know, they, they decided not to accept it. Yeah, I mean, and, and speaking of PR, I mean, last week they said that they were investing $100 billion in their oil industry. And some wondered, you know, is, is that really, that's a big number? Do they really have that kind of money? So today they backed it up saying they're putting $40 billion into the oil industry by March of 2013. I mean, sort of doubling down on that bet and giving a definitive timeline. Do you buy this? Well, there's a few things here. One, you can't really verify. So they could say 40 and put in 20. There's not really a way for us to verify that. So that's the first point. There's no, there's no process by which we can know that. Second of all, uh, the reality is so much of their economy is tied to the oil and gas industry that, I mean, you know, it's over 60 percent of their government revenues. So they have no choice. I mean, it is their economic lifeline. They have, uh, they're in the middle of a 10-year plan to try to really uh, expand even further. Uh, as of about two years ago, they were the second largest producer within OPEC. So, I mean, you're talking about a massive, uh, a massive industry. Yeah. So for them, for them to be investing what seems like huge numbers is, of course, to be expected because they know that it's an investment in getting the money back out. Do you think they have that kind of money, though? You know, it's interesting. Uh, just as I was preparing to come on today, I, I did some, uh, some searching around on some of the news sites, and it turns out that the New York Times has reported as recently as August of this year that uh, the Department of Justice is investigating some Chinese banks for being heavily involved in laundering billions and billions, billions with a B, of dollars into Iran. So you can see that even though we have these sanctions, the, the reality is that there's ways to get around that. And the other thing that they do, of course, is they smuggle a lot of oil. So you, it's very easy, you know, oil is very fungible, very easy to take it in a container, send it over to Iraq at a wholesale price, have the Iraqis sell it onto the uh, global oil market, and then obviously the Iraqis, t you know, p pocket the difference, but the Iranians at least get the wholesale value. Yeah, absolutely. And we've been covering a story that came out of Reuters about them uh, smuggling gold into the country, getting it from Turkey. It's going through Dubai. And I'm sure that's part of the same chain that you're talking about. There's probably oil in there somewhere, right? Yeah, you think? Ab ab absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the smuggling routes that go on in that part of the world are just, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're fabled. It's been happening yeah. for centuries. Mike Barrett, thanks so much for coming on. We always appreciate your time. Good insight.